Brett. Brett Brown. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. Brett staggered the lineups. He took out Horford. He brought out Horford off the bench. He made sure there was good players on the floor the whole game. I'm so proud. <laughs>what is up guys dj swood here this is the run it back podcast home of brutally honest sports takes the most brutally honest sports takes on youtube some people don't like it but some people can't handle the truth listen it's getting real crazy for the trolls around here man it's getting real <laughs> it's getting real it's getting real hard for the trolls around here it's getting real hard for them every video there's like five to ten people that tell me i'm a total idiot and i have no idea what i'm talking about and I just keep being right. I just can't stop being right. I don't know what else to say. I'm sorry for you guys, man. You're just you're just you're just taking defeat every other day at this point. All right, let's get into this, man. Brett Brown brought Al Horford off of the bench finally. Sixers fans have been begging for it for two months now. Um, it worked to perfection. It's unbelievable, actually, how much it worked. There's all of a sudden so much space on the floor. Tobias can go to work. Josh Richardson can go to work. Ben Simmons is getting in the lane. Joel Embiid's posting up and dominating. It's like, holy shit. Like, I knew that was one of the main problems with this starting lineup, but I didn't know it was going to be that much of a difference, and it was ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. All right. Um, everyone's just better with space, man. What are, what are we supposed to say here? Everyone's game is better with space, and then you bring Al off the bench. He's the sixth man. He fills right in for Embiid. He plays strong post defense. Uh, he still gets beat on a lot of pick and rolls for some reason, but then Al Horford can play in the post and get some one-on-one -on -one post ups and get buckets. I mean, it just makes perfect sense. Brett Brown finally did it. I feel like in the past couple of weeks watching this team, we've been suffocating. You know, like there was such a lack of space offensively that it was it felt like I was suffocating watching it. And now with this minor change to the lineup, it's like uh, we could all take a deep breath. Everything works right now. Now, of course, Brett Brown couldn't help himself and he went back to the uh, Horford and Bede lineup with about six minutes left in the game. Couldn't believe he did it, but part of me could believe he did it. Um, it didn't work. Almost blew the lead. He realized this is not going to work, and I'm going to look like a schmuck if I actually try this and lose the game. So he took Horford out, put Matisse Thibel in, spacing again. Ben drives baseline, hits Thibel for a wide-open three. Everything suddenly makes sense and looks like basketball. I'm so happy. I am so happy. Embiid scored the first bucket of the game. Absolutely sealed off Zubak one on one, uh, or maybe it was—I think it was on a rebound, a putback, uh, offensive rebound putback actually. And uh, the crowd had a nice sarcastic cheer. Joel waved him on. He was laughing. He was having a good time. It was like a—it was like a sarcastic, "We love you, big guy." Uh, the crowd just like verbally giving him a hug, kind of. You know what I mean? It was beautiful to see. Our guy is back. The fans are happy again. Everybody's scoring points. We beat a good team at home. I know it's at home, but it was just refreshing to see. This is the most fun I've had watching a Sixers game in a long time. Even if we would have lost this game, I would have said that. This is the most enjoyable Sixers game I've seen in a long time because it looks like all of the pieces finally worked together. Now, Stephen A. Smith and all of these ESPN knuckleheads have to feel real stupid right now because they went on for about a week talking about how the Sixers have to trade either Simmons or Embiid. They don't fit together. They're never going to work together. Here's these numbers. Here's these numbers. Here's these numbers. But they kept leaving out the fact that they were both playing alongside another center and Tobias Harris was playing the small forward when that's not his position either. You know, they were leaving out the fact that the pieces around Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons were not correct. And look what happens when they are. These dudes can dominate together. 21 points and 9 boards for Embiid. 26-point triple-double for... Wait, I'm backwards. 26 points for and 9 rebounds for Embiid. 21-point uh, triple-double for Ben Simmons. No. 
26 and 9 for Embiid, 26 point triple double for Ben Simmons. Uh, it was just great to see all the spacing. It was great to see all these guys get buckets. 21 points for for uh, Josh Richardson. Tobias Harris was going ham in the first half. Tobias was so aggressive from the jump, not not just settling for jump shots, taking his man one on one, driving all the way to the rim. Don't poster two player. I've never seen Tobias Harris go to the rim that hard. I said a couple weeks ago how weak he goes to the rim. He postered two people. The bench stood up and celebrated. Everybody's having fun. It was incredible. We didn't get much from the bench in this game, if you really think about it. Um, Alec Burks and Glenn Robinson III didn't really do much statistic-wise, but they're a clear upgrade from Howell Neto and these other bums that we were running on the floor. Uh, you know... Kind of sucks for Shake Milton, but I don't think he's going to see much playing time moving forward. Mike Scott still got more minutes than I thought he was going to get. I'm not quite sure why Brett was playing him so much in the first half. But um, Korkmaz had his uh, weekly goose egg game. You know, he was due for one. He had back-to-back 30-pointers, and then, you know, he was due for that game where he couldn't make a shot. He was 0 for 6, uh, 0 for 5 from 3, a minus 1, uh I think one rebound. Um, Marcus Morris tried to fight Joel Embiid. That was hilarious. Joel Embiid is a giant. <laughs> Morris gets all pissed off because they get tangled up under the rim. Morris gives him a shove. They get a double technical. And then Marcus Morris gets so overly confident because of his epic Royal Rumble fight with Joel Embiid, or at least in his head he thought that's what it was. He got so overly confident because of that situation that he then tried to take Embiid to the rim one-on-one, and Embiid blocks the damn thing off the backboard, completely spanks Marcus Morris, bends him over his knee, and spanks his naked behind. You are my child. You are beneath me. How dare you stand up to me like that? It was beautiful. We got Embiid back. That's the Embiid we've been missing, the guy that's going to run and smack a ball off the backboard, the effort, the passion, the heart from start to finish. Ben Simmons was everywhere. Ben Simmons was harassing Kawhi Leonard and Paul George all night. These dudes were crying to the officials all night. They wanted a foul on every single play. It was so good to watch. Ben was just plucking balls, just d people up, just making, forcing turnovers. They were so frustrated the whole night. That's what Ben Simmons can do defensively. Offensively, Ben Simmons was everywhere. And the main reason was it's a combination of two things. All of the space with him playing only with Embiid and not Embiid and Horford. So when Embiid stands out at the three-point line. There's nobody in the lane. Ben Simmons goes to work. Montrez Harold couldn't stop him. He was in the lane all night. Drive and kick, drive and addition under the rim to to Josh Richardson, uh, getting acrobatic 360 no-look layups. I don't even know how he made that one over his right shoulder. That was the weirdest thing I've ever seen, and it banked in. I literally said to myself, what the f*** was that as he shot it, and it banked in. I'm like, okay, fine. He blew a lot of them, too. He would have had probably a 35-point triple-double if he made some of the layups that he missed. Uh, Ben Simmons got fouled all night long and only got, like, three of the calls. If if the NBA gave Ben Simmons the calls of a James Harden or a Trey Young, he would score 50. Seriously. And now that he can kind of make free throws, I have confidence in saying that. Uh, But, yeah, man, it was just a beautiful game high energy. It looked like everybody got it looked like everybody got their life back. You know, it looked like everybody got their confidence back. I didn't expect it to look this much different with that minor change of Horford coming off the bench. I didn't expect it to look that much different. But the team with these lineups looks strong. And I mean there's no weak lineup. There's none. Horford comes off the bench. Now we have a starting center on the floor, all 48 minutes. It's, I mean, it's what should have happened in the summertime. Like I said, just because they they paid this guy to back up and be, that's literally what they said they paid him for, and then they tried to stuff him together for six months. I don't know how it took Brown 50 games to figure this out, but he finally figured it out. He finally 
swallowed his pride, stopped being stubborn, did what was right to make this thing work. Now, moving forward, will Brett Brown continue to bring Al Horford off the bench? Uh, It makes the most sense in the world to keep doing it, but I wouldn't hold your breath because Brett Brown is very unpredictable, never ceases to amaze me with his decisions. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. He might have just done that because the Clippers are small ball. You know, he might try to run the Horford and beat Simmons lineup against the Bucks or whoever else, and we'll see if that works. Uh, can we win on the road? Can we do this on the road? I think this is it. I think this is the clear move. This is the obvious move that changed this team and made them made them work better, made it made everything more cohesive. Uh and I think they got to keep it going and they have to try it on the road and we'll see if they do that, man. Hopefully they can do that. Hopefully these players can come out and play with the energy they played with tonight on the road. I don't know why they have so much trouble on the road. I don't know why they come out with such lack of energy. I don't know why they look like they don't care when they play on the road, but we will find out shortly. You guys let me know in the comments what you think about this game. Is the Sixers season saved? Did Brett Brown finally shut me up? Did Brett Brown watch my YouTube channel and say, you know what, this son of a bitch on this Run It Back podcast might be right, and I'm going to do this and see if it works so this guy stops talking about me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. My name is DJ Eastwood. This is the Run It Back Podcast. Go Sixers. Peace out.